Okay, we got about 15 people in here. You guys um, able, if you're on the chat, can you guys uh, let us know if you can hear us? Hi everyone. Can you hear and see us? Nice, okay, Sarah says she can hear us. Hello and welcome, thank you for being here. Today we are talking about the farm bot. What is it? What does it do? And what can I learn by using it? We are answering these questions and more with FarmBot CEO and mechanical engineer Roy Aronson and Night Owl Bay's Chief Technology Officer Chris Harmia. I'm your co-host, founder and creative director of Night Owl Bay, Cheryl Anderson. And I am your co-host, Barbara Pastashek, CTE Pathway Lead and Demonstration Teacher from San Andreas High School. So sit tight and we will be getting started shortly. Now for some housekeeping. Be sure you're comfortable and ready to watch the presentation. That means wear headphones if possible. Take any bathroom breaks if you need them. And make sure you don't have any distractions or interruptions. Please keep in mind that we're recording this virtual classroom session so that others who couldn't make it can watch it at a later time. Any links, documents, or resources mentioned in the presentation will be made available. We will be answering any questions at designated spots throughout the presentation. Now here's what you can expect. When you first log on, you will see a page that looks similar to this. On the left, the presentation or speakers, and on the right, the chat box. We will have designated spots throughout the presentation to ask questions. That said, we would love to see you interact in the chat. If you have any questions or comments during the presentation, enter them in the chat box here. We will go through and answer your questions during the designated question times throughout this presentation. Note, the default settings are to send to everybody and to be in chat mode. If you need to send a message to admin or the presenters, for example, you can't hear the speakers, you'll need to change the chat box setting to send to admin only and type your message, then send it. Only the admin presenters will see your message. Oh, and in this virtual classroom, we are doing something special. At the end of the presentation, we will be selecting a few individuals to be on camera live with everyone. You will either be asking a speaker a question or sharing what you liked best about the presentation. If you would like to be on camera, you will need to request to speak. To do that, go to the top left corner of the chat box and click on the hand icon where it says request to speak. If you change your mind, you can always cancel the request. If you are chosen, you'll be taken to a page like this. Be sure to go through the checklist so you can log on to connect your video and audio. Click continue and start the test. If you can see your video and hear your audio, click yes, and you are now ready to enter the virtual classroom. When you enter the room, be sure your camera is on and your audio is muted. When it's your turn to speak, you can turn your audio back on. And when you're done, you will be put back in as a regular attendee. That's it. Sit tight and we will be getting started shortly. Presented with the current food production system, one cannot look past how broken it is. We have surrendered our knowledge and control over how our food is being produced, and as a result, we're destroying our health and the environment. It's a shame. We're here to change that. Three years ago, I had an idea for a new paradigm of food production. The idea lies at the intersection of automation, the open source DIY maker movement, and small-scale polycrop farming. 
And over the last three years, a small dedicated team and I have been working to make this idea a reality. Introducing FarmBot Genesis, humanity's first open source CNC farming machine. FarmBot moves around in the XYZ space, day and night, seven days a week, growing food for you, just the way you want it to be grown. FarmBot precisely sows seeds in any pattern and density you want, and then waters them efficiently, the exact amount that each plant needs based on its type, its age, soil conditions, the local weather, and your growing preferences. FarmBot can grow a wide variety of crops all in the same area at the same time, while each plant is cared for individually in an optimized, automated way. By growing many types of plants at once, your garden will benefit from the natural advantages of polycropping and crop rotation, while you and your family gain from a healthy and varied diet. Using the onboard camera and advanced computer vision software, FarmBot diligently monitors your garden, detects weeds as soon as they emerge, and then buries them under the soil. With the soil sensor, FarmBot can show you how your garden changes over time, enabling smarter, more efficient farming with each passing season. With FarmBot, your garden will flourish, your plants will thrive, and you will gain access to fresh food grown right in your backyard with the practices that you believe in. You control and configure FarmBot using a powerful web-based interface, so no coding is required to grow food. With the Sequence Builder and Scheduler, you combine the most basic operations of FarmBot into custom sequences for seed injection, watering, and even whole regimens for taking care of a plant throughout its life. The Drag and Drop Farm Designer allows you to graphically design the layout of your plants for a game-like experience that's fun, fast, and easy. You simply press the Synchronize button and FarmBot does the rest. FarmBot's hardware is designed for easy assembly and modification. With the included tools, you will assemble FarmBot to a size that suits your needs, and because everything is made from corrosion-resistant aluminum, stainless steel, and 3D printed plastic, your FarmBot will work for years out in the elements. We spent months prototyping the universal tool mounting system, allowing FarmBot to automatically switch tools for the task at hand. It provides 12 electrical connections, three liquid or gas lines, and magnetic coupling to support any tool you can imagine. So far, we've developed the seed injector, watering nozzle, soil sensor, and weeding tools to cover the basics of food production. FarmBot's core electronics include the Raspberry Pi computer, the Arduino Mega microcontroller, and a ramp shield. Combined with powerful NEMA 17 stepper motors and rotary encoders, tools are reliably positioned within millimeter accuracy. And our flexible hardware and software platform is ready for you to modify and expand upon FarmBot's abilities. Want to design your own tools? Go right ahead. Need FarmBot to control lights? That's easy. Inspired to go off-grid with solar power and collected rain? It's already been done and we can show you how to do it. And the most important feature of all is that FarmBot is 100% open source. All of our software, hardware plans, 3D CAD models, and documentation is free for you to download and improve upon. We've written step-by-step -step assembly instructions, documented past versions of the hardware, and even set up a community wiki and forum for collaboration. In the last year alone, we've seen independent replications of FarmBot all across the globe by teams and individuals and companies small and large. Now we want you to join us. We're looking for inventors, garage tinkers, hackers, and DIY food enthusiasts to dive in with us and help grow this exciting new technology platform. FarmBot Genesis is 1.5 meters wide and 3 meters in length. It's perfect for getting started in a small space. The kit is fully weatherproof and can be placed outdoors, in a greenhouse, or even on a rooftop. With your support, we'll be able to manufacture and distribute these kits at an affordable price, continue building software features, and openly research and develop FarmBot technology with you. Pre-order your FarmBot today and help pioneer this new paradigm of farming. It's time to own your food. Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay.
Okay. Are we getting started? Mm -hmm. We're ready. All right. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us live for this special San Andreas High School virtual classroom series. Experts around the world. Before we get started, I want to do a quick hello to everyone here that I can see. Um, I heard Ms. Cheryl already say hi to Ruben and David and uh, Charles Camera. Good morning. If this is your first time joining us the, in this virtual classroom series, it is part of the business and technology career pathway at San Andreas High School. The aim is to connect students to industry professionals and experts around the world and provide accessibility even more so now during these challenging times. So many of you already know Chris Jaramillo if you uh, are at San Andreas High School. Now I'd like to introduce you to Rory, uh, our special guest. Say hi, Rory. Hey, everyone and our industry professionals. So I'm gonna play a quick video really so that you guys can get to know a little bit about Rory and Pharma. Rory Aronson is a mechanical engineer and social entrepreneur focused on large scale social and environmental challenges. He aims to benefit humankind and the environment by taking ideas into action via engineering, design, entrepreneurship, and personal lifestyle choices. FarmBot.io is an open source project allowing hardware, software, and documentation modifications and add-ons from its users. The FarmBot project was started in 2011 by American Rory Aronson while studying mechanical engineering at California Polytechnic State University. In March 2014, Aronson began working on the project full-time, funded by a grant from the Shuttleworth Foundation. This allowed him to create the company FarmBot.io. The company provides hardware kits and software services while serving as a funding source to maintain the open source community. This precision agriculture CNC farming project later added firmware developer Tim Evans and software developer Rick Carlino as core developers and the open source community FarmBot CC was created to support the development of the project. The project aims to create an open and accessible technology aiding everyone to grow food and to grow food for everyone. Cheryl, your mic's muted. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, Rory and Chris, thank you guys for being here uh, and taking the time to talk today about FarmBot. Um, uh, you guys are ready to go for your presentation. Rory, you have your slides up and ready to go? Uh, yep. Let's see here. Can everybody see that? Yes. Yeah. All right. Cool. Let's get started. So hey everyone, my name is Rory. As you just saw, uh, I'm that guy in the video. Uh, usually about every six months, my hair color changes so that I can do a new video and look a little bit different. Makes things a little more fun. And uh, as you saw, I am the uh, CEO and the founder of um, FarmBot. So I wish I could see you all, but um, why don't you just think to yourself about this question, who here eats food? I know it's a little bit of a dorky question. Um, yeah, most people if you guys can enter it in the chat, that would he'll be able to see everyone's oh, answers. Uh, so I'm going to assume that most of you eat food, probably about three times a day, maybe sometimes twice. Cheryl eats food. Ruben's eating food. Oh, maybe you're eating right now. <laughs> Rebecca eats food. So as we all know, food is is pretty essential. Um, but I think a, a better question to ask that isn't so obvious is uh, who here owns their food? So by owning your food, what, what am I talking about? I, what I'm asking is who here grows their own food in their garden? Who here knows about all of the processes involved in putting food on the table? Do you uh, slaughter your own animals? Do you milk the cows? Do you grow the vegetables? Do you um, you know, prepare all the different foods in different ways. Uh, or like most people, you probably just go to the grocery store and pick up something, or maybe even some of you just open up the refrigerator and there's food there. 
Uh, well, the reality is that, you know, that food doesn't just get there. You know, the refrigerator doesn't make the food. The grocery store doesn't make the food. There is a very uh, complicated uh, series of producers and distributors and logistics people who um, grow the food, the farmers who uh, engineer the tractors, who uh, design the refrigeration equipment, who drive the trucks, uh, all the way to the grocery store for people who uh, stock the shelves and check you out at the cash register and get the food to your home and then you can prepare it. Um, so that's kind of what, I what I'm talking about when I say owning your food is, is the whole process required and one really good way to own your food and be in control of the food system is by growing it yourself. And so that's uh, why I founded the company FarmBot is to allow people to uh, automate the growing of their food in their home so that they can own the whole process and be very self-sufficient and self-reliant and they can grow fresh, healthy, organic food right in their backyard exactly how they want uh, without necessarily being reliant on this very complicated food system. Uh, as you all have probably seen, things changed up quite a bit in the last few weeks uh, and months here in the United States and all across the world because of the coronavirus uh, situation. And that has caused a lot of people to uh, be scared to go to the grocery store because it's a risky place to go. Uh, and a lot of people now are starting to garden because you can grow your own food, something that you absolutely need. Everybody said they, they eat every day. And so it's, this is something that you need every day. And if you're able to grow it in your backyard, that's one small piece of the puzzle of your whole life that you can have a little bit more control over and be self-sufficient and self-reliant. Uh, so that's, again, kind of why I started the company. Here I am growing my own food in my backyard. This is about 10 years ago right when I went out of high school and into college. So as you saw in the introductory video, um, I went to Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo in California, and I studied mechanical engineering, but I was also very interested in these uh, self-reliance uh, sustainability ideas. Uh, and so here I am growing my own garden, and there's my first salad. But then this is how my garden ended up after not too long because I got busy with school, I got busy with going to the beach to go surfing, I got busy visiting my family and going out of town, I got vi busy with my job. And this is how a lot of gardens end up for a lot of people. Uh, maybe some of you have a garden like this in, in your home um, where it's become overgrown with weeds, you've become busy and you were excited about it in the beginning but then um, you know life got in the way and you decided this isn't a priority right now. Um, so the garden turns to weeds and gets really ugly and you no longer maintain it. Barbara, I think you had shown me pictures about some of the students making their own gardens. Right, so um, our students are very well inspired in Ms. Uh, Gutierrez's class and also in, in my classroom where they have been working on projects on um, being very creative during this time and growing some of their own plants. and. Um, uh, and being able to take even some of the vegetation in their refrigerators that have sprouted and then like potatoes or garlic or um, onions, and then it multiplies, of course, um, at that point and have been utilizing that and taking advantage of it during this time. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a great activity when we're all stuck at home here. So this is, um, you know, after my garden kind of starting, started going downhill, uh, that's when I began thinking about uh, some of some ways in which I could have a garden, but be able to to garden when I'm away from home or when I'm busy or when uh, I'm not feeling inspired and motivated to go out and pull weeds and and water everything. And that's when I started tinkering around and experimenting with three d printers and laser cutters and other um, CNC equipment. Uh, I was working out of my local maker space where we have access to a lot of cool technologies like that. And I started, um, you know, messing around. And this is one of the first FarmBot prototypes that you see in the photo. Uh, that's at the maker space. And it has 
a lot of similar parts that you might see uh, in a makerspace or in one of the labs um, that you've uh, gone to, to use some of these technologies in. This is the first prototype that I built of the farm bot outside. This is in the front of my house, which maybe you recognize now from some of the videos. And eventually we grew a whole garden with one of these machines. So that's Swiss chard in the garden. And we made uh, very delicious raviolis with that as the filling. Uh, you can see there's some solar panels on the right that are powering the farm bot. And at that point, um, this was in uh, about 2016, we decided FarmBot was ready uh, you know, to go out into the world. And so I made a, um, a cool video that shows all the plants growing and shows the FarmBot working and describes what it does. You know, It moves around left, right, forward, and back. It um, plants seeds, it waters, and it uses a camera to take photos of the garden and then find the weeds and remove them. And so we put this video out there on the internet, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Reddit, uh, all the usual places that people go online. I know it's a little different today, but um, this is what was popular back then. And uh, people really loved it. People said, this is so cool. I want to get one and I want to get involved in developing this technology because I think it's important and because I want to be able to grow food at my, at my house. Um, while also, you know, taking kids to soccer practice and doing my full-time job and uh, being able to travel for a couple of weeks without having to worry about the garden. So people really loved it. We put it out there and um, a lot of people started ordering these kits from us. And here are some photos of where the kits have gone. Um, so a lot of our FarmBot kits have actually gone to schools and universities. Uh, and they're used in an educational setting. So it's a really fun project to put together the FarmBot and learn about all sorts of different things that the FarmBot uh, interacts with. So of course, there's the project of putting the FarmBot together that you have to follow instructions, you have to learn a little bit about using tools, you have to work as a team to put uh, the product together. Sometimes it requires a little bit of troubleshooting uh, and we have documentation and videos that can help you. And that's a fun process and also a challenging process for a lot of people to put something like this together. And then once you get it together, you can start growing things. And that's where the real fun begins. Uh, and that's, um, Chris, I'd like to um, uh, do a little back and forth with you now about yeah. the different applications of the FarmBot and all of the different very cool things that you can learn about when using the farm bot. Uh, so these three photos here are photos of farm bots at schools and you can see they're being used in different ways. So one of the really awesome things about the technology is that you can grow anything you want in whatever way you want. Um, Chris, can you talk about some of the um, experiments and things that you've grown with your farm bot setup? Yeah, definitely. Um, so here at San Andreas, um, with our farm bot. I've worked with uh, Barbara's students. Uh, I've also worked with uh, another teacher named Miss um, G. Particularly though with Barb's students, I know that we spent uh, a lot of time um, kind of going through the logic of how you would program the farm bot to complete a certain task. Um, I know that this is very important because uh, even for me initially, when I first started to work with the farm bot, um, I wasn't really considering all of the steps and how to go from point A to point B. And so I know one example I could explain um, or I could use would be um, when I was first programming a watering sequence, I never really took into account that, okay, well, plants are gonna grow, for example. And so as the plants got bigger, um, my, the farm bot just plowed through the plants, actually broke some of the plants up. And so um, when I was working with Barbara students, that was one thing that I really tried to kind of help focus with them on was the logic, you know, okay, well, you can't just go from point A to point B in a straight line. Sometimes you, you have to go up, you have to go down. Um, and so I know that that was really important uh, in, um, as a lesson for using the farm bot itself. Awesome. Yeah, so to that point, whenever you're programming the farm bot, uh, you have to tell it exactly what to do. And something that's really fun is you press the go button 
and FarmBot will do exactly what you told it to do. And sometimes if you don't think far enough ahead, then after the first 10 steps that FarmBot uh, performs, it gets to the 11th step and something unexpected happens, something that you didn't want. And then you go back to your logic and you go back to the programming and you can make some adjustments and try it again. And that's a really fun process. It um, allows you to think about computer programming. Um, it's the same thing that, that you'll do if you decide to go into coding and computer science as um, a career option. Uh, and it's an awesome way to have fun with this robot and you get that kind of instant gratification of seeing your programs work and grow these plants right away. And then once you get it working, you can let the farm bot do it every day at six in the morning before you're even awake uh, okay. and you don't have to worry about it. Well, it's been really nice too because it, with our, our special education students and our regular education students participating, um, you know, we've had math and science uh, classes come in as well. But the problem solving that happens that whenever there's a glitch, we don't think that, oh my gosh, we just messed up. It's just a new way to be able to problem solve. Yeah, correct. Exactly. So here are, um, you know, once you, once you iron out all those glitches and you problem solve your way, this is what you end up with. You end up with an awesome looking garden and uh, you are able to grow your own veggies. And so this person wrote on Instagram that the garden robot has been working hard, nothing like fresh carrots right from the ground. Uh, and that is, I think, what separates FarmBot from a lot of other projects as well. Um, there are tons of cool, exciting, fun, educational projects, you know, BattleBot type stuff, or you make a robot that puts a ball through a hoop, um, which is all very cool and a great learning experience. But at the end of the day, a lot of those projects don't provide something very tangible and real. You know, going back to that opening question, who here eats food? Everybody does. And uh, so this learning how to operate a farming robot like this and learning how to troubleshoot and problem solve can be very important uh, in providing something that everybody needs. Uh, on another note, Here's how this technology is used to give people superpowers. So uh, there is a nonprofit in South Carolina and they serve people who uh, have disabilities and wouldn't be able to garden like uh, you or I might be able to. Uh, so this gentleman in the wheelchair, he is not able to uh, get down on his hands and knees in the garden and pull weeds. But what he can do is he can use a tablet computer like an iPad. And so he's able to uh, grow his own food using the farm bot as a tool. Uh, and, and he would never be able to grow his own food otherwise because he, he has this condition. And so using the farm bot can give people superpowers, which is really awesome and really re rewarding. Here's another example. My whole team, uh, we got to go visit NASA in Florida because NASA is looking at using the farm bot to grow food in space. So uh, in the future, humans are probably going to go to Mars and we're probably going to go back to the moon and we're going to have spaceships flying all around. And one of the major problems with that is how uh, is everybody going to eat? Where does the food come from? Because there's, um, you know, that's going to have to be grown from somewhere or brought along with the mission. But if you want something fresh, if you want something um, long-term sustainable, you need to be able to have uh, a system in place that can grow food for you. And so uh, getting involved in a project like FarmBot opens up a lot of opportunities. Um, Chris, can you talk about how um, some of the, uh, the examples and um, you know, working with the farm bot can lead to several different career paths? Yeah, definitely. Um, so the farm bot itself uh, is, of course, you know, a CNC platform. Um, and for the attendance uh, at this lesson, um, that those that don't know what a CNC machine is, is um, it's basically uh, a three axis system. So you have one, one axis that goes forward and backward, another axis that'll go left and right, and then the Z axis, which is going to go up and down. Um, and that's actually used in a lot of things. Um, 
uh, particularly, which I think some of you might know, is uh, 3D printers. So 3D printers run off of the same exact uh, platform as, say, the FarmBot. Um, there's the other industry, um, which is uh, manufacturing. And so there's CNC milling machines, which uh, they basically have a, a, drill, a drill bit at the very tip um, of the machine. And you can cut out circles. You can cut out squares. It's used to make a lot of uh, very particular and specific parts. Um, I know that's one thing that I really think is important about the FarmBot as it uh, pertains to like skill sets that a student can obtain is, um, you know, it's not really, you're not just growing plants. Uh, there's more to it. You know, you, you, you gain skills that could be applicable to, like I said, CNC manufacturing. Um, you know, it also gives, I think, um, students a really important aspect of creativity. Um, and so Rory, I know you mentioned uh, makerspaces. Um, could you go ahead and just explain really quick what a makerspace is for those that might not know? Yeah, so a makerspace is like a gym with tools. And everybody gets to go there and use the same tools to build whatever they want. Some people want to uh, make a bookshelf for their house. Some people need to repair their bicycle. Some people want to work on a robot. Other people want to just go and hang out and learn about woodworking, about welding, about sewing, pottery, ceramics, you name it. Anything that can be made uh, with your hands and with tools, you can make at a makerspace. And so that's where I got started with FarmBot, is we had a 3D printer at my makerspace. We had a, a way to cut metal. We had um, some drills and some screwdrivers. We had a soldering iron so I could work with the electronics. And that is how I started building FarmBot. And that's yeah. places like that, or places like some of the laboratories that might be available at your schools, uh, are a great way to get involved with all of these different um, opportunities for a career later on, uh, whether that be with manufacturing or product design or electrical engineering, all sorts of stuff. I would stuff. even say like coding. Um, I know when we were working with the FarmBot to get it to uh, some of the events that didn't have Wi-Fi, we had to go and figure out how to get the server. So anyone who has um, backgrounds in servers and networking and um, also programming um, would have had to been able to uh, do any customization that way. So that's another skill set if you want to get deeper into more technical aspects of the, the farm bot. And um, I know, Barbara, we had a virtual classroom that we actually talked to, was it Matthew Mickens? Who, who worked at NASA. I don't know if you yeah. ever had a chance to meet with him, Rory, but he was studying light using FarmBot um, and we got to interview him. Sorry, Barbara, go ahead. Oh, no, that it, it, was, uh, it was another great presentation that connected us also to NASA and science and the math skills and just showing that whatever we're growing in the classroom, the students are not just restricted to just being farmers, that these applications expand beyond that. And this is just a great way to use technology to be able to give a product, like you were saying um, earlier, that um, yes, you, you can program the robot to make the basket and the hoop, you said, but it's very fun. The students... Um, when they get to see actually the uh, produce that they are growing, um, it's very exciting to them. And they're learning uh, about all of the different herbs and the different um, uh, vegetation that they're growing. And they're more apt to try something new, like, you know, if they've never tried a turnip before, you know, they're, they're willing to try it because they grew it. Whereas maybe if it were just sitting there in a salad bar, no, I've never had that before. I don't want it. So it has these, it's, it's been very great in many applications and in health and, and their taste buds. Yeah, definitely. Right. Once you've gone through the process of growing your own food, you realize how valuable it is and you realize what, um, what great work it is that all of our farmers do for us. Um, you realize how hard it is and how temperamental plants can be and how sensitive they are to the environment. And, you know, if you forget to water them for a couple of days, they might not turn out how you want it. If you have a bug or there's a fungus growing of some sort, um, you know, might not be able to harvest those crops. And so it really makes you appreciate what you see in the grocery store when you go and get it, because now you know, now you really understand how much work went into making and growing that perfect looking produce. Uh, and then again, to your point, Barbara, uh, once you've spent all the time growing that, 
okay, well now, now you better go through and eat it. And you'll probably want to look up a recipe and, and figure out a creative, uh, delicious way to cook and prepare uh, whatever it is that you've grown. Um, so on the screen here is uh, a photo of one of our electronics boards. Uh, and again, this is kind of showing how uh, the farm bot has a lot of different aspects to it um, that can lead to different career paths or different interests. So here, uh, you know, we had to design this electronics board. So we had to know how uh, all the little wires and, and pieces connect to each other. We had to make sure that we tested it so that it was safe to use. Um, we had to uh, design the software that runs on the microcontroller, which is a small computer. And if you begin working with this type of stuff, that is what can lead you to work at companies like Apple designing the next iPhone or um, you know, at a computer company or uh, anything that has electronics in it, which is, which is so many things these days, this is what could prepare you for a career in that. Uh, yeah. On the top right, you see one of our plastic parts. Uh, we had to design this part not only for 3D printing, so that people can make it at home or at their makerspace, but also for injection molding, where you have two molds, you push them together, you push a bunch of plastic inside, and then you pull the molds apart and out comes your part. Um, as you can imagine, if you've ever made a jello um, mold before, or you know some type of, um, you know maybe paper mache type molds, um, you have to design the mold properly, otherwise when you try and pull it apart, it won't come apart. Yeah. And so that's a, a major design choice that needs to be figured out and built into those parts. And that's something that you can learn with the farm bot is you can, you can pull any one part off of the farm bot and say, how was this created? How was this manufactured? What processes were used? And you can see in the bottom right, all of the aluminum plates um, that were all machined. And each of those requires uh, different processes to get it all set up properly. Quick question. Yeah. Um, it's, again, maybe a little ironic, but so I'm assuming that all the, uh, uh, of the aluminum frame uh, metal pieces are CNC machined? Yes. Yeah, so again, I'm just kind of bringing it back around. The farm bought the CNC machine, you know, it's, it's kind of ironic, I guess. Right. The, the machines are sort of making more machines. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then through all that, through all the manufacturing, the engineering, the testing, the design of the software, the, um, the packaging design, uh, the logistics for shipping, um, everything culminates in people getting their farm bots and putting them together and then growing delicious food like those strawberries in this photo. And so that is uh, a little nutshell about what FarmBot's all about and what it can do. Um, Chris, did you have anything else that you wanted to add to the presentation? Um, well, actually, oh yes, actually. Um, I, was, I mentioned it uh, earlier, but um, Again, I do think that a, one aspect that I think is really interesting and important about the farm bot, uh, again, is just the technical skill sets that you can get, you know, understanding uh, troubleshooting and, you know, building something, uh, programming. But um, the one thing that I always thought was the most interesting is the creativity aspect. Um, so you mentioned again that you can print all the, the uh, a lot of the plastic parts um, from a 3D printer. Um, and so just even with that in mind, you know, the farm bot as an application itself, you, if you want to, um, uh, I've, I've seen it on the forums before, uh, uh talks about using a, like a laser to get rid of bugs. Um, and so if you want to come up with your own idea and implement that to the farm bot, um, I think that's really interesting. I think that's really creative and, and can be very fulfilling for a student to be able to have that. Um, that platform and to be able to use creativity to put whatever they want on it. Exactly. Uh, one of the problems that a lot of our customers have is uh, they live in a more rural area and they have problems with deer and birds and squirrels and all sorts of animals coming to eat their garden. And so some people have uh, put a little sensor a motion 
carbon sensor on their FarmBot. And whenever that gets triggered, FarmBot then starts flashing the lights and it moves around and it scares everything away. <laughs> exactly. See, it's stuff like that. That's that awesome. I think, yeah, I think that's just so cool about how the FarmBot, how you can use, again, creativity and put that with the FarmBot. Um, so I have a question. This is actually more of like a, a business uh, entrepreneurial question. But, um, you know, do you have any, like, maybe uh, any tips or advice um, that you could give to maybe a student that maybe wants to start their own company or become an entrepreneur? Yeah. Uh, for somebody who's just starting out, I'd say you got to just go for it. Uh, there's a lot of um, stuff that will get in the way of you in your journey towards creating a product or creating a business. Uh, but it, none of that really matters. You know, all these hypothetical blockades in the future, none of those really matter if you don't take the first step. Um, so whether that be just making a sketch on a piece of paper or showing an idea to your parents or talking about it with your friends, uh, that, those are the, the first steps that get you excited, get you thinking about how you're going to problem solve and how you're going to turn what is just an idea into a real uh, product, a real business one day. Uh, you just yeah. got to get started and you take it day by day, you take it problem by problem, and you just keep working on it. You know, they didn't build the pyramids uh, just like that. They built it one brick at a time. You don't um, design and engineer Farbot just like that. It takes years and years and years, and every day there's a new challenge. Every day there's, um, you know, something else that needs to be figured out and worked on, and you need to talk to people. You need to talk to um you know experts you need to talk to customers and eventually you'll figure it out and it takes a lot of persistence and um effort uh, but again when you're starting out just take that first step one step at a time yeah i think that's that's some very very good advice it's, i think a lot about that is you just have to remember to keep persevering kind of no matter what because you're always going to encounter issues you're always going to encounter those kind of blockades um, Cheryl, Barbara, do you guys have any questions? Anything you guys want to talk about or elaborate on? I just, I really enjoy the opportunity that it gives for the students to have another platform on um, being able to grow produce. And um, I love that it is uh, how, how you can set this up for a very small garden or a very a large expansion in, in your backyard. Um, so I, I, I love all the little problem solving ideas that come up with that. Like you were saying with uh, deer and rabbits, maybe wanting to come into the garden. It just, it, it, like Chris said, it offers an opportunity for kids to be able to be creative and um, think of solutions. And uh, our students have some of the best ideas. So it's very fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love how uh, FarmBot is able to, um, reintroduce to you some tech with something that's very earth and natural, uh, which is food. Everybody, like you said, Corey, everybody eats. Well, everybody in the chat said they eat, eat, but I think some people said they only eat a little bit, not sure why. Um, but I really like how um, you, you can use this technology in many different industries and you're seeing it, like you said, um, uh, with Internet of Things and everything, there's technology and electronics and almost everything that we use now. And being able to pair those two together, I think, is is awesome. And I love how you have this as an open source and everyone can go and make their own additions and modify it so that it suits what they're looking for. So um, I have a question, Rory. Do you... So here at San Andres, we're finishing up um, an outdoor area. Um, have you heard or have you explored any uh, FarmBot applications for use inside of a greenhouse that has, let's say, like the hydroponic NFT system? Uh, we do have a number of customers, um, and you can talk with them on the forum online mm -hmm. um, who have looked into modifying their farm bot for hydroponics use 
Um, so, you know, all the photos that you've seen here that shows the farm bot with soil in the, in the growing bed, but some people have uh, a growing bed where they have uh, potted containers with their plants in it. And then the, the growing area is like a big tank or a pool and they'll pump nutrient rich water into that tank uh, using the farm bot. And then uh, the, the plants will soak up those nutrients through the roots and then they'll drain the, the pool and they'll do that on a specific cycle according to how the plants, um, the plants needs. Uh, so there are people who have taken what we've developed, which is primarily for soil based growing and adapted it to different growing styles like hydroponics mm -hmm. um, and also different environments, of course. So we have people who have farm bots on rooftops, in their backyards, in greenhouses, indoors, in laboratories, all sorts of places. Interesting, that's awesome. So do we want to, uh, do we want to open up, um, do open questions if any students or any of the attendees have any questions that they'd like to ask? Right, this is, this is it for the presentation, guys. Um, thank you, Rory and Chris, for uh, being here with us today. Um, we want to thank all of you guys for attending and participating. Like Chris said, we want to see if any of you guys want to go live. I've, I have Charles is in the waiting room to, to be able to be accepted. I know David said he would want to. So they're gonna they're getting their um, video and audio checks really quick. Um, and then I'm gonna see if James Douglas, are you still in here? Um, wants to, but anyone who else is in the chat, can you type in what you really liked about this presentation and also um, something that you would have liked to learn more about? That gives us help with um, giving feedback. So I'm gonna jump off really quick here and I'll see what do we have here in the chat. Hey, David. Hi, David. <laughs> do you have a question, David? Um, so, so a question I wanted to ask is, is uh, will we be able to grow plants on Mars soon if we're able to? I sure hope so. Uh, so that's going to require a lot of engineering challenges to overcome. You know, we even have problems growing plants here on Earth. Uh, and Earth is a lot uh, more livable place than Mars. So on Mars, um, you're going to have to consider things that you don't consider here on Earth. For example, the gravity is different. The atmosphere is different. So you're going to have to probably grow everything inside of a greenhouse of some sort. Um, you're going to have a, have to um, change up the soil uh, on Mars because Mars soil I don't think has the same nutrients as Earth soil. Uh, and then of course the sunlight is a lot less because Mars is a lot farther from the sun than we are. And so how do you choose the right plants and grow them in the right ways to be able to grow enough food for you know a whole colony of of people living on Mars, that's going to be probably the most difficult challenge of um, inhabiting another planet is being able to secure water and food on those planets. Oh yeah, uh, but I hope I hope we can do it soon. We'll see. I usually grow on on Earth, so I'm fine with growing on Earth. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, David. It's a good Thank question. You, Very creative. <laughs> Um, I see Charles is on. Our, do you have a question for us, Charles? Well, uh, um, so um, you said about with the plant, um, the home with the uh, uh, um, talk about with the plant stuff. Like, do like what do you do uh, for quiz? What what does are you asking? What he are you asking Chris a question? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Sorry. Go ahead and ask the question once more. I'm saying uh, you talk about uh, um, I heard him, and so do with the plant, the white plant, and so the plant can go up and do outside in sunlight, 
Something, mm -hmm. something like that. You're talking about the greenhouse? Yeah. So we're using the farm bot in the greenhouse? Yeah. Okay. So, so are you ask what are you asking about that? And so um I like with the plant uh the um with the uh strawberries is going fast because mm -hmm. the fruits like they got like different they got peach they they got like wonderful taste uh -huh. good. so after that you have to rinse it out like give them like like a food like you have to eat hot before like the food right yes yes that's true yes yeah and so that's what i got well uh, thank you charles um uh, so uh so th this is raymond raymond can you turn on your video raymond so we can see you sure oh sure how did i even do that okay well you can just ask your question um how do you um how are you able to put the seed inside the farm the farm bot? Good question. That Raymond is question. Raymond is new to us, so I'm glad that he asked this question because um he, he didn't get to see the farm bot up and running. So this is okay. a very good So there's a few different parts, Raymond that the farm bot uses to put the seeds in the ground. So first there is a, a little cup and you have to put the seeds in the cup and then you put the cup into the farm bot. And then the farm bot needs to move over and it has a little um, needle. One second, I have one right here. Hey, All hey, right. hey. Here's the cup. You can see it says seeds. So you put the seeds in here and then you put this in the farm bot and then the farm bot needs to come over and it's gonna come down and it's gonna pick up one of the seeds. And the way it does that is there will be on this part, uh, there's a vacuum connected right here through a, through a tube and the vacuum will suck up the seed. And then the farm bot moves over to where you want the seed to go and it turns the vacuum off and then the seed goes into the ground right where you want it to go. And then it will go and do that again uh, for however many seeds you want to put in your ground. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Any other vacuum, like the, the vacuum that pick up the Dirty stuff. It, it uh, does very, kind. Of, yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's you, very similar to a vacuum, a vacuum cleaner at home. It's just a lot smaller. It's only about this big. Wow. Okay. Great, great, great question. That was a great question, Raymond. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome. Do we have anybody else joining us, Cheryl? Uh, we have Patty here. Patty, go ahead. If you can turn your audio and video on, that'd be great. Hi, um, that was actually a mistake that I got on there for a question. Sorry about that, but you guys are awesome. I'm enjoying it immensely. Sorry about that. Thank you. So do we have any I, other questions then? I believe James is wanting to ask a question or at least say what he liked about the presentation. Right, James? Um, can you go on the top right uh, left corner of the chat box? There's a request to speak. If you click on that, I can go ahead and bring you into the chat. I don't see. Or maybe, I think that's, I don't think he's in requesting okay so i have a question for all of the participants so the farm bot has the seeder tool for putting the seeds in the ground it also has a watering nozzle for spraying water onto the plants it also has a 
One second, let me grab it. A soil sensor for measuring how much water is in the soil. So you can determine how much to water. And if it has a few other tools, I'm curious though, what do you all think would be a really cool tool for the farm bot to have to be able to grow plants better or to uh, improve the soil or to make it more fun to use? Um, you know, what do you think? Chris, I know you said uh, you thought it would be fun to have a laser beam that could be used to, to target the bugs. Yes, um, exactly. What does everyone else think would be really cool for the farm bot to be able to do? So for any ideas that you guys have, go ahead and uh, you can go ahead and type them into the chat. Uh, Barbara wants something that can harvest the crops. So kind of like one of those claws, right? Yeah. In Toy Story where the claw comes down and it grabs the little alien. That would be great, <laughs> especially if it gets larger, you know, on our small scale, it's okay. David or Ruben or Gustavo, you guys have used the farm bot quite a bit. Do you have any ideas that you think could be added on to improve the farm bot or something fun? Oh, a fan to blow the bugs away. I like that. Hmm. Here's one of our prototypes right now that we're working on. This is uh, going to be mounted into the bottom of one of these plastic parts, something like this. And this circuit board here is an ultrasonic distance sensor. Hmm. So out of one of these, uh, circles here, or the cylinders, uh, is a speaker, and the farm bot will be able to send an ultrasonic sound that you can't hear. It's very high pitched, but you can't. It's so high you can't hear it. The farm bot will be able to send out these audio waves, and they're going to bounce back. They're going to echo off of the plants and the soil and everything else that this is pointed at. And then they're gonna bounce back. And this one is a microphone. And it's gonna measure, the farm bot will measure the time that it takes for the sound to go from here to the plant and then back into the microphone. And with a little bit of math, the farm bot will then be able to figure out how far away is an object from this circuit board. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this to move around the garden. And when we put it right above one of our plants, the farm bot will be able to tell how high and how big the plant has grown. That's cool. So that kind of solves the problem that Chris was talking about earlier of having it plow right through when it's watering, it will be able to sense mm -hmm. the height. That's really neat. Right. So, and then you can also track how well your plants are growing. So, um, you know, if you add some fertilizer to some of your plants, but not to others, you can then use the farm bot to take measurements and run an experiment and you see, okay, we added uh, fertilizer to these three plants, but not to these three plants um, and, and measure every single day how well the plants are growing. That's awesome. I like that. We have a... Uh... We have someone who uh, John had said that it would be good to have a uh, tool that reads the pH or soil fertility level. Yes, that would be very cool. So right now we have this one. Um, this one measures the soil moisture. The way it works is it has the uh, electrical contacts right here and also um, on the other side. And the sensor will measure um, how much electricity can flow from one side to the other. 
And if there's more water in the soil, then more of the electricity will flow. And if the soil is too dry, or if it's just out in the air like this, then no electricity can flow in between the two. Uh, also on here, if you look very close, is this little circuit board here, that little chip. And that measures the temperature of the soil. So that's a new, a new addition with our newest soil sensor. And what we really wanna do in future versions is also add uh, pH sensing mm -hmm. um, and also some way to measure the soil fertility. So a great idea, John, we're working on it. Yeah, that's awesome. That gives me an idea of, um, so in G2 here in our classroom, a lot of the systems that we have are hydroponic. Uh, and we actually just installed um, uh, pH dosing peristaltic pumps. Um, you know, in addition to the pH uh, sensor for the soil, it would be interesting, you know, potentially you could blend or you could mix together what would be, you know, a soil sensor, uh, a pH uh, soil sensor. And then the same thing as a peristaltic pump, which doses maybe your water, for example. So you could increase and lower the pH of the soil. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Awesome. Oh, Cheryl, you're muted. <laughs> Sorry, thank you. So that's all the time that we have today. Um, for those of you who want to stick around, uh, there's a another, let me go ahead and put my slides really quick here. Um, we are, one second. Okay. So uh, any resources or links that we were talking about in the, in the presentation are gonna be available. Um, if you haven't registered for Friday's session, there's the link um, in uh, on the screen right now. It's bit.ly uh, vclass102. Um, and then right now we're gonna be going to office hours, which is where we're all gonna kind of have a, a chit chat about today's session. You guys are welcome to, to join us on there. That link I'm gonna put in the chat right now. Um, that's it, that's all we have time for today. Thank you, Chris, thank you, Barbara, thank you, Rory, for uh, taking the time to talk with us today. And thank you to all the students and everybody who came in and, and participated. I love the questions. I loved how you guys were able to get on and, and talk. Um, but that's it for today. I'm gonna put the link right now. Bitly, where is it? Bitly slash GHP office if you guys want to head over there um you're welcome to and listen in as we talk about this session awesome thank you rory thank you, thank you guys <laughs>